What's going on, everyone? This is Jordan with Conquer Trading and Investing. It is Friday. It is Friday, and it has been an explosive week. We have a lot to take in here, a lot to analyze, catch up on. And we still have a big trading session ahead of us. We have the PMI manufacturing PMI numbers coming up in about 45 minutes out of the USA. We're seeing so far this morning. We're seeing so far this morning, U.S. traders coming in, and so far they are selling the dollar, but we are so used to seeing them come in and buy up the dollar. We're all conditioned to that over the last couple of weeks that I think traders have to have uh, th their back foot ready here. We'll see what the data prints. Um, let's see. Let's take a look around everywhere. Obviously, everyone's eyes are on gold. Everyone's eyes are on gold ever since it broke out up here. It's been unstoppable and continues the rise. I thought 1639 was actually a level of resistance. It seems to be trading above that right now. It is really, really something to behold. Good morning, everyone. Great to see you. Glad you're here. Okay, okay, Blair, Heath, Tico, Tico, Vibra. Yeah, we're live. Alberto, great to see you. I believe we're live. I'm live. You guys live with me? Um, we're going to get into everything right now. Uh, over the night, we have the pound, the strongest. Let's take a recap of the data. We had... Um, a little bit of mix, but the very positive data overall out of Europe, uh, including out of the EU as well. That's orange impact. That's not up on here. We had nice uh, data out of the UK. Uh, core retail sales beat out of Canada. And it's all down to the US in about 40 minutes. Vicky, great to see you. Swato, everybody. Let me send the link. Maria. All right. That's right. Great pips to everybody. All right. Uh, let's take a rundown here. So dollar's been on fire, just like gold. Sorry. Let me turn off some not notifications here so I don't keep getting interrupted as we get do our thing now. Get ready to do our thing. It was a tough night, uh, you know, you know, when you have to get up, watch these prints, and then an hour and a half later, you have the UK prints. But here we are, ready to go. By the way, Bitcoin's just like between levels here, between blue boxes. I think I'm waiting for uh, to get really bullish. If we get back above, I would say 1040 over here. And as long as we're above uh, 9,100, uh, 9, I remain, I remain uh, with, a, with a bullish bias. If we get below there, I think we could be coming down towards 82. Uh, but right now, Bitcoin is hanging in there doing its thing. Yeah, we'll take a look at everything. Uh, so... We could start here with gold, but gold broke out. We were watching this over here. Look at this trend line over here. We were watching this pattern. And then once it broke out, um, listen, I don't, gold has come up into resistance this morning. So if it, if you're going to get a, some of a little bit of a retrace right now, that would not be unexpected, but listen, to be holding gold on this type of breakout, you know, you gotta, you gotta take a pause you got to reevaluate your game plan and what you're doing. Uh, and you, you got to really start from the higher timeframes and work your way down. Gold is, is just uh, extraordinarily bullish and, and trying to short gold is, is really trading counter trend. We have the same thing happening here on the U S dollar, Japanese yen, right? We have a breakout. If you were shortened over here, down over there, if you broke out of the support and you're shorting that, of course, that's the play, right? But once you broke out of this trend line over here, five years, you have to be on the long side and definitely not short against it. 
right? So, so buy off of supports in uptrends and sell off of resistance in downtrends. It's, it's start there. Euro uh, can't seem can't seem to get a footing still, still maintaining the support over here, still trying uh, to just get even a little bit of a bounce. And yet we've seen yet to see any type of even a dead cat bounce on the euro. This is um, this is just the way it is. Let's see what this print brings this morning. Martin, morning. Steve, some good trading overnight, Steve. Pound, New Zealand dollar. Pound is the strongest. New Zealand dollar, Australian dollar, very weak. They've broken down technically. We'll take a look at them in just a moment. Um, pound is, is doing all right. Uh, strongest currency going into the session. Uh, and speaking of the pound, I want to take a look at the pound Japanese yen. Because it looks to me like it's breaking out over here. You can see that... Um, I guess since the high put in of December 31st or over here, January the 22nd, it's currently trading above those two areas right now. And we peek down here. Let's take a look at the eight hours, see what that looks like. You had this long wick down here. Buyers came in, held it up. It looks pretty healthy over here. Um, I think some top side targets would be this resistance over here coinciding with this trend line over here. So I put that in somewhere probably around 145.80. Uh, yen has been the last, uh, Blair was talking about this this morning. The yen has been uh, bid every Friday for the past four weeks. Uh, whether or not that's going to continue today, we'll see. We've seen a big move on the yen this week. We've seen a big move. Um, and I don't know that we'll see uh, too much yen bid as much as perhaps some just consolidation this morning on the yen. That's right. Not, and not only that, I mean, you got to, you got to, you, you got to reassess. You can't just be in a, tr you got to have your stops in before you get into the trade. Always. The first thing we do is entering the trade is we have the stop in take profits. Not even as a second thought that's added later as the trade develops, you know, you have the area we're looking for take profit, but the first thing that goes in is stop loss. Uh, we're really not getting into trade management here. Uh, but the first thing that goes in is, is stop loss. And beyond that, listen, you got you got to get in the habit of, of not trying to fade moves. It doesn't make sense to fade moves, especially now as the volatility in, in foreign exchange is beginning to open up. We're seeing that over the past couple of months. We're seeing really expansion of ranges and the volatility has been very, very low these past few years. Once it wakes up, you know, if you're trading an old style where you're just, you know, hoping to fade moves and it worked out, um, you're going to get crushed coming forward. So really uh, use this as a moment, as a moment to tighten up and uh, you know, it's very simple buy off of support and uptrends, sell off resistance and downtrends, start the basics. Australian, New Zealand dollar continues to be in this range, this base range. This is consolidating now going on for a while, for a few months. And when it breaks, I expect a big move. I keep saying that because it's the further something consolidates, the further the base that's put in, usually the bigger the move. This is coming off a big move down, a big sharp move down. And now it's been consolidating. It's pretty easy to play above this, above the blue box, above the resistance over here, a breakout, take it to the upside as well as if the New Zealand dollar winds up actually putting another leg low and breaks below the support over here, play that to the downside. So 
So bank bankers have uh, been suppressing the price of gold for a long time. Uh, but right now, the U.S. is prosecuting, prosecuting some gold manipulation cases. It looks like actually that it's possible that the U.S. wants higher gold prices right now. Uh, we have central banks buying gold. Uh, gold prices are pretty low. I don't think that they're trying to keep the prices down or uh, I think the accumulation phase is, is way over. That was, I, I think, between, uh, I'll call it $1,100 and $1,300. And um, so don't, don't fade for $20. Maybe, maybe buy for a couple hundred. But, the, but don't chase it now to the upside either, obviously, right? I sold my gold position too, too soon this week. That was the worst trade of the week. I, I took the breakout over here, entry at 1581, and I sold it over here around uh, 16, um, I think 1606. When it was at 1611, I put in a stop, and that was a big mistake. Riyadh, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Let's take a look at the at the actually the, the, for before we look at the Euro Canadian dollar. Let's look at the U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar. We had some uh, a little bit mixed data out of out of Canada this morning, but a beat on core retail sales. And let's check in and see what's going on over there. Yeah, thanks, Heath. I, I mean, you're right, and and I appreciate it for sure. I feel like it was a bad trade though. And, and, and the only reason I say like, I feel like it's a bad trade is because my, my initial, um, my, my initial area for take profit was 1439, uh, 1639. I should have hit that this morning and have hit basically, a uh, you know, pr pretty much, a, a out of the park home run first pitch. Uh, but it's okay. The, the, I love learning from my mistakes. I really love learning from my mistakes and I'm always looking to, to improve. US dollar, Canadian dollar. We're still between this resistance and this support over here. When I say support, let me show you what I'm talking about. You see this trend line support coming in over here. It's held up pretty well. Uh, when we when we tested down, we came into this support over here. It's marked as red as a resistance, but that's support clearly from this breakout over here. Uh, and we're between levels, right? If the dollar gets, if the if the manufacturer comes in with a huge beat this morning, well, I don't know. Maybe they sell the dollar. Maybe they take profit on the dollar. But that's not what we would expect would happen. We would expect the dollar to continue to be bid. Maybe test up a hundred on the DXY. Uh, either way. Just watch the charts. If we break above here, this resistance over here, uh, I, I, I think that's something that we all want to take to the upside. Adversely, we still got some more work to do to the downside. If the dollar starts selling off later today, this morning, um, and we get below, back below this trend line over here, I think it's a good place to sell. But right now you're between support and resistance. Dominic, 100% joining in now is probably not the wisest decision. Um, I think that there's more than normal seasonality going into gold right now. Uh, but that being said, I read a headline saying that after next week is not favorably seasonally for gold. It was on Forex Live. I read the headline. I didn't read the article. 
Um, something to keep in the back of my head though. Australian dollar, Swiss franc, Swiss franc, uh, really, really, uh, again, this was a, I want to always look at my poor trades, poor analysis and learn from them. And right here, this is very strong resistance. And the whole idea is always to sell off of strong resistance in a downtrend. Now, I was playing this reverse head and shoulders that broke out here to the upside. It was a good trade to take. But as we rejected off this resistance, as we rejected off the resistance over here, I should have exited the trade and I should have actually got short. Live and learn. Oh, the Euro Canadian dollar. So Euro is, huh. We're into resistance right now on this pair. We're into resistance right now. Break above this little local resistance over here. And this could be a nice trade into the bigger resistance for sure. Right? That's, that's what I would be looking for uh, as opposed to looking to sell down over here uh, only because we're so close to the lows. By the time you get an entry, you're already at the low. I don't like selling into the lows. New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar. So this is coming off of pretty, the New Zealand dollar has broken some important technical levels. Ever since it broke down here on the Canadian dollar, it's been straight down. You can see now the support over here. It looks like it's trying to bounce off of. I don't pick bottoms. I'm not looking to go ahead and take this trade by any means. Although you can see what's happening. Uh, and I think we need to put in a line right here for a, the, the, the closest resistance that we are looking to sell if it comes up into that resistance. That's what we're looking to happen next. Let's jump over to the Euro Japanese yen. So crazy, crazy. This was the big yen move we saw this week. This was the yen just sold off. And what's happening since it came right into that resistance, was rejected, and it, it this support over here is holding. The support's holding over here and it's consolidating now. So there's nothing happening here. It's consolidating. You should be on the sidelines. Uh, and uh, it was, I think it was Heath this morning in, in the chat. Uh, great, great 24 hours uh, of, of chat. I really enjoyed the conversations going on in there. Um, and he was saying what he expects, and I agree, is after that huge yen move, uh, it would be normal to see some type of consolidation. And that's what's happening here on, on the Euro Japanese yen. We have about 12 minutes to the US equities opening. They're opening a little bit down. Uh, continuing there, let's take a look at them. Continuing yesterday's sell off. And I don't think there's that much to read into this, except th that's absolutely normal, right? I mean, you can't just keep going up forever. And all you did was we had a little bit of a down day. I don't see any uh, indication that the, the indices are being sold or that you'd want to step in the way in that and, and sell. So it, it, is this the top over here and does something bigger develop? Well, who knows that? I wouldn't, you know... I was joking with DJ yesterday when uh, price was down here. And I was like, oh, now's the time to, to, uh, to buy calls because everyone's always looking to sell puts on the indices and, and they keep, they've gotten killed for the last 10 years, right? New Zealand dollar, US dollar. I think Steve has been all over this since the breakdown over here. Fantastic trading. And what's happening now? 
you have this whole area of of uh, of supply over here. It's going to take a little while to work through that for sure. Uh, we've come down hard and fast. If someone was trading this intraday, would they be looking to sell it down here at these levels? Let's take a look. This is the area over here. If you were short time uh, minded, you got to take a look at first what happens in this resistance if you're rejected off of it. I would not be looking to sell that further. Get above here and clear above here. Okay, then possibly we could look at maybe even coming up and testing the breakdown. And that would be a, a good level to look at to see what happens and what develops. Uh, your CAD right now is trading into this resistance right here. This local resistance over here. Um, I think the Euro is we have about 25 more minutes into the, into the uh, PMI out of the U S come out. Um, I expect the Euro is going to key off that one way or the other. Uh, and you know, if it breaks above this local resistance over here, yeah, then I think that we have a good chance a trading up and coming into testing this over here at least or first. Um, it, but, but I would stand, I, I personally, Jordan would just consider being on the sidelines until you come into a strong resistance. Well, I don't, I'm not a day trader would be leaning off this level if it was rejected, right? If you're trading and, and, and looking for a scalp, uh, that's a hard way to make a living. I'm looking for a, a, always, strong supports a strong resistance. So the only thing I'm not sure of, it looks like, well, I'll keep it right here. I'm keeping this level here. I wasn't sure if I should move it up a little bit to the bottom of this base over here. But when I see that on the, on the breakdown, price came up and tested to this, where I have this resistance. So I'll keep it where it is yeah, right there. Vicky, great. I mean, that's what Heath was saying the same thing you're saying, Vicky. Vicky, if you're not into our Telegram chat, please do jump in there. Um, and Heath was saying the same thing. He was saying that, uh, you know, he believes after these large, large moves on the Canadian dollar that it would be normal to see some type of consolidation. And I agree, but I have the pound as the strongest. And it's breaking out here first, the, 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 the end. And, um, you know, again, we've talked about the last four Fridays have seen the end bid, but it doesn't mean that we're going to have the fifth one today. Australian dollar, Japanese yen, Australian dollar came all the way down. Japanese yen came all the way down against it into this support. Again, it did help hold. You are between this resistance and the support, and you're actually in the dead center of it at no man's land. Um, you know, and, until you could break above this resistance, uh, then you're just in no man's land. I, I don't, I could be wrong. I don't foresee risk, risk on coming in the session to the degree that it's going to push us below this support. We'll watch for it. We'll check back in later. Let's check the, the US dollar, Japanese yen, I think we skipped over. Uh, we know it broke out and now it's consolidating. You could see it's consolidating and that could go on for a little bit of time. Um, is it possible it puts another leg up in today? It's highly unlikely, it's possible, right? Same thing, same thing with gold. Gold is up into resistance. So I expect it to consolidate over here. Um, We'll continue watching it, but now is not, today's not a day to take a position in either one of those. The euro, which is stuck down here at the bottom versus the dollar, you know, and uh, you can see it's basing, you know, it could make a move this morning. It could make a move this morning.
Let's check out the US dollar. Swiss franc, I'm sorry, I didn't see that message. Martin. Um, so again, I'm seeing it's between resistance and support and it's a level of consolidation over here. Um, now, is it possible is it finally possible the dollar C is finally a sharp retrace this morning? It's entirely possible. Um, it's, it's been so long since we even got a little bit of one. And is it possible then the Swiss franc breaks down over here and comes down into the support? I could see that happening, right? But right now you're between resistance and support. You're between this range. A breakdown of the support could lead into another test down here. Uh, and ultimately I'm watching for a break above this resistance. The dollar continues to climb. And if, and when that is, you know, it, it could continue to make some gains here versus the Swiss franc. Yep. WTI, also big resistance overhead, right? Rejected off of it, but it's, it's consolidating. That's all it's doing, it's consolidating. Uh, and it's consolidating here, pretty healthy. Um, and there's, there's not much to say. It's the, you, you don't wanna trade something that's sideways. You wanna wait for the break to the upside or to the downside. Australian dollar, US dollar. Let's take a look at it. Australian dollar, US dollar. I mean, the clearest thing I see just checking out this chart from the beginning, my eyes are just drawn to the where it broke down over here. Uh, we've broken clean through. We haven't stopped since the breakdown. And uh, obviously, you don't want to look to buy and pick bottoms over down here, but you don't want to sell down here either. This pair has come hard and fast. We have data coming out in a little over 15 minutes. And let's see if that moves the dollar today one way or the other. But instead of getting in the habit, break the habit of trying to pick. Try, so you know you do it. You know, you, you try to come in here and buy, right? And you're always, traders tend to always look to, to buy bottoms and sell tops. Instead of doing that, just get in the habit of, of only trading off a of strong support or resistance. You're gonna improve, you're gonna improve your win ratio and you're gonna improve your profitability. So I'm looking, uh, you know, base case this morning is that we do trade up, but that's not a trade you take, even if that happens. Uh, I, I don't I don't not trade because of news, but I don't trade off of the news unless it's a central bank rate decision. Central bank rate decisions are definitely traded. Uh, those are traded off of actually short time frame, uh, one minute time frame when markets are moving. But normal data prints, um, I, I don't trade off of as far as you know. If if the print is uh, positive, I look to go ahead and buy the pound. No, I take my technical setups that are happening on the chart. Now I do take profits off of off of news releases as they occur. But I don't, I don't let, I'm always aware, we're, we are always aware of the calendar, always forward looking to see what's coming on up next uh, and, and how that affects the pairs we're in. But I trade off the charts. Pound, US dollar, pound is, here we go. Pound is coming up into an important level. Let me take a look at the daily first with you. So the pound is into some resistance right now. Let me clean up the chart.
Pound is into res some resistance right now. It actually tested it this morning. So far, it has come off of it. What does that mean? If the dollar turns out to, to turn around this morning and become bid, a rejection off of this resistance is a trade that I'm interested in. John, I'm um, expecting the pound. Uh, and here we're looking at the pound dollar, first of all. And if, if the dollar does come in here, and if this is rejected over here to the downside, and we see all of a sudden, as we've seen for the past two weeks, the dollar just bid no matter what happens. Uh, at that point, that could put some pressure on the pound. Pound has a good data though. The pound Japanese yen to me broke out over here to the upside. And I'm expecting, and I'm, let me pull up a higher time frame for you. What I'm looking at is this little bit of resistance over here, coinciding with this trend line resistance. So I think the first area to look to see if you're going to be taking profits is going to be somewhere around 145, uh, 70, 145, 80 about another 100 pips to the upside, and that's quite possible. Um, other yen pairs are consolidating. Pound strong this morning, though. And pound yen is trading at some uh, three-month highs. So I'm not looking to fade that. Yeah. We got a big group in here this morning. Everyone that's here, I appreciate you very much. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for that. Thanks for all those who've gone ahead and hit that like button, help this get seen by other people. Do appreciate that very much. Um, gold, again, just, I mean, everyone's focused in on gold because of this move. But listen, this is not a case of, uh, you know, I saw it like, but the entry for that I took off gold is right here, right here, coming into this. And I, I exited too soon, right? I exited the trade too soon, 1605. Uh, but gold over here, everyone's attracted to today because of the huge move. But here it's come into a bit of a resistance. It's probably going to consolidate over here. It probably, it could come down, right? Could come down. And, you know, I don't know how far it would come down. It would be great if it came back down to 1612, uh, but I don't know. It looks like it's going to consolidate over here right now. But again, things are a little bit crazy as far as the DXY, gold, they're moving. Things look like they're broken, and we don't know uh, the yen, US dollar, Japanese yen, right? We're seeing volatility pick up, and over overbought as gold is right now finally overbought, could remain overbought for a really long time. So it's not something that you're looking to pick up gold on, on, on test of supports. You're looking to buy gold on supports until gold breaks down, right? It looks like gold is going to have a bid under it for the next year or two uh, and or until things change, right? Um, but gold right now is at a place uh, traders might be looking to take some off the table, not, not add to positions up here. We got uh, 10 million minutes here. I'm focused in on what's going to happen with that PMI print. US dollar, Canadian dollar stuck between this, this resistance and the support. All right. 
let's take a look at the pound Canadian dollar. Uh, I've seen a lot of things now. Support coming off support, definitely uh, over here. So pound, if it gets above that resistance on the pound U.S. dollar, uh, pound pairs may continue to the upside over here. This is the area I'll be looking as an area of interest to possibly take uh, a look at a sell if, if we don't break out to the upside. Uh, but right now you're between support and resistance. And that seems to be a lot of pairs right now. Uh, the only thing that's really close to a support remains to be the euro versus the US dollar over here. And you can see, but again, you know, don't get in the habit of picking bottoms. Ooh, Rustin, I was looking at that last night. Glad you brought that up. So it looks like I put this trend in line earlier in the week with you all. And it looks like we've come up now and we're testing that trend line, a breakout of that trend line over here. I would then, you know, have to say that we could probably see some prolonged moves. Now, I want to look at the DXY on the daily also. We only have one down day so far today, so far. Uh, I was talking about how it seems when the dollar sells off, it gains against the Mexican peso. Uh, that's coming in a little early. But this is a this is a big move. The carry trades could blow up quickly. Um, so if we get above here, it would be very interesting to see what happens, right? Because we could we could see some sharp depreciation in, in the peso. But that move is exciting. Yeah. Um, everyone, we, ha we have about eight minutes here. Yes, dollar print. Uh, please give me one quick moment here just to say good morning to the chickens. All right, do appreciate your patience on that, everybody, for sure. And you're climbing up into the print. About five pips off its highs on the day. So, what's the year of doing versus some other neighbors? Coming up into a little bit of resistance over here on the on the against the Australian dollar. If the euro does break out here to the upside, uh, 
it looks like it could go higher. Obviously, this was the support down here to play off of and not to trace the trade up down over here. Uh, I assume the same is similar off the euro, New Zealand dollar. And just so focus on this as a learning exercise because this is really important. You could see the resistance and then the support area put in is specifically over here. And then when the support held over here, uh, you could see that was a, was a really good spot to lean into. All right. I don't remember whether or not we were talking about it. Either way, you want to you wanna focus in on what you should be looking at. And print that in your brain. Euro New Zealand dollar is coming up now into this resistance over here. If the euro finally gets a bit behind it, it looks like this could continue up pretty far. And it looks like a break above this resistance against the New Zealand dollar over here. Uh, if you get a break above and then a retest, that could provide an entry to the upside. So we'll have to wait on that. But if the euro finally, finally turns the corner here, it could be providing some further extensions, especially versus the New Zealand dollar. Extending the gains, all right? So we got quite a way, we have quite a ways away, about 70 uh, points down to, uh, I, I think we'll move this support up. I'm not yet reading anything into that, just normal, some normal uh, retracement here, as could be finally the day the DXY gets sold. Um, <laughs> but you never know. It seems like every time it, it looks like the DXY is getting sold, they come in there and they buy it up really quick. So let's see. But the first hint was finally this morning when the, the New York traders came in uh, and they started selling it this morning. A lot of times they come in and they start buying it. So we'll see, we're just now down into this, this really first area of support. We have another area of support down here at 99.49. So we're seeing a little bit of, uh, a little bit of yen and I say a little bit, a little bit of yen uh, strength, but look, even on the Canadian dollar here, this peaked out to new highs and it's just pulling back into the support over here. If this resumes off of the support over here to the upside, this could also be interesting for a continuation trade over here on the, the Canadian dollar Japanese yen. And then I'm seeing the uh, pound Japanese yen, again, similar pattern, more of a bid on, on the pound than on the Canadian dollar. Uh, holding above this broken resistance over here. Let me turn some lines over. We have about one minute left here. I'm interested how the euro reacts, how the dollar reacts off of this print. So let me go ahead and just pull up the euro, which is trading right now about four pips or so off the highs of the day. Um, Let's see how this print moves the market. If it does, euro making the highs of the day right now. Um, 
extending up a little bit. And check out what the print was. All right, a little off. Let's see. Let's see. This will be very interesting to see if the euro could finally uh, do some damage here, or again, if, they, if the dip buyers come back in. Let's take a look around. Let's see what the pound is, how the pound is reacting off, off that news because it was coming up into this strong resistance right over here and has the possibility of breaking to the upside over here. Then we have the Australian dollar, which has just been so weak versus the dollar. Not able to get any type of foothold yet. Um, what else was very weak? The New Zealand dollar. Parking up a little bit. The Japanese yen, which had a terrible week versus the dollar. Let's see if it's using any, any opportunity here. So the euro is the play right now, it seems. Looks like the dollar momentum is continuing lower. Let me see what you all are saying. Big move on the US dollar, Swiss franc, Gabe. Let's check that out. And we were, because we were looking at that earlier today, this morning. coming in and it looks like it's breaking below this support right here. Euro extending its gains up to 837. And so the Euro New Zealand dollar, I wanna see if that's also continuing put up its gains as the euro picks up bid here. It's come far though, already. Alberto, I hope that you're making back some money here on the US dollar. What's going on with gold? Gold gaining on that, on the weak dollar is still gaining. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, what if gold continues the breakout over here? I, listen, I, I, I think the next stop is 1800. I'm, I'm not calling for a straight move to 1800, but listen, the, the resistance was at 1639 and we're trading above it right now. Let's see where we close today. Beautiful. That's exactly where you want it. Martin, you're sitting pretty. So, I mean, if, if any of you, look at that, look at that, Martin. So, does, does anyone's shell shocked that they have in their mind that they're going to come out and smack down the euro here? I think that's normal, but I mean, just looking at the charts of where the next areas are, uh, we have very little resistance uh, or, or local resistance coming in at uh, point. 0863. And then over here, I think is the first resistance that we need to, to really look into. 
and that's all the way up at 0.092. And of course, the big one's up there, but you're finally, finally taking a bit of a move today. And uh, it's very nice to see. You two in cahoots over there. I'm, I want to take a look at though. I, you said a massive support you sold it. I want to take a look. I don't know what's going on. So let's see. There's the resistance you were talking about. I see it now. It is it is pretty big resistance. Blair, Heath, good job. I wish you guys would have shared that chart in the chat. So, um, by the way, bigger picture, I'm looking for the, the yen move to continue. Uh, this is, to me, it looks like obviously huge breakout profit taking area. Um, I think down here, I'm gonna put in a line uh, about 110, 83, 84. And that's gonna be the first area that I would look in to lean into for a buy. But I don't think this yen was a one one off move. Let's see if they come in and what they do with the dollar today. Dollar just coming down. Looks like it's testing some near term some light support over here. It's a small level, but the dollar buyers have been relentless. Looks like that yen weakness is a little bit across the board. Uh, I want to check out the Canadian dollar Japanese yen and the pound Japanese yen. Both remain above their breakout. And the, the Canadian dollar is just leaning into it now. Did the Canadian, is the Canadian dollar gaining off of this weaker dollar? Barely. Barely. Maria Gold is uh, just continues to get be bid, and it's amazing. Your Canadian dollar look, look looks like a good chance that we get a test of this resistance all the way up here on the Euro Canadian dollar. Canadian dollar is lagging a little bit here, um, and probably there's a little bit of pressure on oil. I can see oil is down 1.7 percent. That's why, and um, Euro so far is a little bit bid. U.S. dollars come into the first local area of support. Let's see what it does over here over the next 30 minutes. Pound US dollar is, looks like it's trying to break above this area of support over here. Uh, sorry, this area of resistance. I have it marked as support. Sorry for that. I think sometimes when I change
and the yen continues to be bid. The day did not disappoint. We're expecting this to be a big data day. We're seeing some big moves now coming back to close the week. Looks to me like the yen uh, is still consolidating though. That, that, I mean, this is my opinion, what I'm seeing. Uh, of course, we're seeing over the last uh, couple of hours, yet bid but it's coming into the low of the range some supports over here i'm looking for the for the breakouts more along the lines of of the euro is actually pumping pound not far behind it um you could see the euro stronger than the pound right now australian dollar finally making back a little bit of gains New Zealand dollar also joining in. The dollar is a little bit weak this morning off of the little bit lower than expected print. Let's see if those dollar dip buyers come in. I think we got to get a lot of work to do still here on the euro. All right, so another question is, does this move that we've seen over the last 15 minutes extend over the next hour or, or is it bought up? And we don't know the answer to that question, obviously. Yeah, he's Martin. That's a windfall. You see, both everything is broken out and now just coming back and testing those breakouts. So let's see if we get that further extension or not. I want to see the peso break out of that trend line is what I want to see. Um,
It appears the move is, is looking to extend itself. Let's see if it's actually a move or not. Gold trading off a tiny bit right now. You would assume that if we get a, if we start making a little bit of gains here on the euro, uh, that a lot of people who have been selling the euro are going to start taking profits. And that move could be self-perpetuating. If so, it looks like the dollar is breaking down a little bit further. Yeah, Blair, do you have a ticker on that? Let me try. There we go. Gold and 10 years. This is a uh, big breakout, isn't it? Hold on a second. looks like a cup and handle and then it also looks like a bull flag you got a bull flag and then you also have a cup and handle Yeah, and strength is continuing as that dollar weakness continues as well. Seeing both of those go hand in hand right now. Industry is putting in some losses over here. This is a good. You can see that's coming down into some support a little bit lower. I'd say 30, 33 29. It's about 11 pips, uh, 11 points off. See if this low, low, the lows break down over here. And throughout all of this, Bitcoin is not doing anything. Bitcoin's on the sidelines. Maybe it's waiting for the weekend. Gold continues to trade near the highs. 
dollar near the lows looks like it's taking out that the little bit of support down over here next stop could be 99.15 let's see if we come there quick and hard want to look at a daily of the dxy uh, i was looking for a big sp spike but that's a pretty pretty big bearish engulfing candling taking out one yesterday's low and then uh also wednesday's low so far that's a that's a pretty strong move I'm trying to take out this important resistance level to the upside. New Zealand dollar is still uh, basically barely positive on the day and the Australian dollar barely leading that as well. So the, I don't know if it's the right time to be looking at the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, but I think we might be coming up towards the top of that resistance. And since I have my eye on it, I want to check it out. It's getting close. You can see it over here. Still caught in the consolidation though. The XY pushing further down in the euro at the highs of the day. I think there's going to be some uh, a big flame war on Twitter. There seems to be a ton of at the moment dollar bulls and a couple of uh, dollar bears in there. So I think that we're going to see some interesting threads on Twitter this weekend. Yeah, so let's all talk about it. I mean, that's that's obviously the the, the current million dollar question. Um, so let's start. Let's first look at the dollar, the DXY, and then we'll look at the U.S. dollar, Japanese yen, and then um, and then Heath. We probably should pull up also the yen index as well, right? So let's start here on the DXY, and I'm going to start. I'm going to start on the weekly. So on the weekly so far, to, I mean, hey, listen, the day's still got a lot of trading in it. It's early in the session, 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern time. Let's see where we close here on the weekly. But so far on the weekly, it looks like we're putting in this really big wick. If so, I would have to say coming into this uh, resistance over here, looked like we were breaking out and we have to call that a false breakout. And what would that mean? I, I think over the next week uh, or two, we could see a, a pullback on the dollar. And guess what? That would only be really normal. There would nothing be wrong with that whatsoever. When I say that would be normal, I mean, at that point, I, I would not say that we're not going to see higher than 100 on the DXY this year. You know, uh, I, I'm, or, or let me re reword that. I'm still bullish on the dollar. All I'm seeing right now is finally a retrace of this manic, manic price action. Where that ends, we're going to find out. I mean, that's what we're watching, right? Uh, but if we do close towards the lows here today, it looks like that's going to extend further. And we have an area down here, 98.40, which is a pretty big support. It'd be nice to see how price reacts around there. 98 is also a big support. All right. So off of those levels, if price you know was rejected, I think I, I would use that as an opportunity to be able to get long dollars. So before we look at the US dollar Japanese yen, let's just look at, at the euro. 
And what that means is if we get up into this resistance here or, or specifically here, uh, those might be beautiful opportunities to sell. All right. Uh, I don't think this is by any means a game changer. I just think it's some profit taking, right? Um, US dollar, Japanese yen, we broke out at that five year trend line. The, the yen pairs, yen looks like the move wants to continue. I don't think this is the end of the yen move either. I think that we're going to see further yen weakness. Now, Blair and Heath were all over the resistance up here. I wasn't, it wasn't even on my radar. And I wish you guys would have shared the chart. Uh, but that being said, this is after this huge breakout to come into the, to the, the closest big resistance and trade off of it is normal. What we're looking down here, I think, is to see if we get a test of that 110.86. Let's see if, if price holds over there. If price holds there and retraces, it's very bullish. All right. Uh, secondly, if we get a test of the break of the trend line, if we get a break, a test of the trend line and resume off, have to assume that we're going to see further Japanese yen weakness as well. Alberto, send me a, uh, just send me a, a, a direct message. Gold is trading above the, the last, broke the last resistance today at, at 1639, is now trading above. It looks like it's unstoppable. Blair, I'm assuming your, your 10 years is also doing the same thing. And guess what? I mean, listen, you definitely don't want to be, you don't want to be selling gold. That's for sure. Profit taking. If you took profits off of this breakout better than me, because I took it too early. You know, I took mine on the retrace down to 1605 and um, you know, gold is in a bull market. It could keep going. The highs over here are 18. Uh, you know, if we don't get a, a, a sharp, Sell off in gold by the end of the day. Look, it could be in play. And uh, so next week, I understand starts the seasonality of gold. That's not positive for gold. Let's see if that comes into play. But there's bigger things in, 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 in the picture and work right now. Gold is obviously uber bullish. You're looking for any pullbacks to buy off supports. Where's the closest support? The closest support over here is no longer. This is the breakout. Look, this. This broke broke out of this of this uh, of this pendant over here. It's a triangle, and then I think over here now you could easily draw in the next support, and that's over at sixteen twelve. All right, and you could see that price came into that area. That was the high over here of the year. Price back down, and then busted through. It's already tested it, but that's that's the, the the closest support to be looking at right now. And gold is just uber bullish. Yen appears it might be consolidating right now. I think that we have the, the euro is the strongest pair right now, and the pound is the second, uh, followed by the Japanese yen, Swiss franc. Just dollar is, is weak right now. And again, it, it just seems like a normal, finally, the retrace of that strong dollar has come in. Uh, how bad was this number? Look, manufacturing is still an expansion. It's above 50. It's not the end of the world, but... Perhaps what, what the market and traders are now looking at is, uh, you know, because of the effects of the slowdown in, in the supply lines uh, that, you know, we could see further slowdown and we actually go the next print 
that could be into contraction below 50. Yeah, and so and here's a good time frame to be looking at this pair on. You could see right over here where my mouse is right now. That's clearly where the support is, and price is consolidating over here. Uh, it's a big range for the U.S. dollar Japanese yen, right? It's a it's a it's a seventy pip range. So there's room to play over there. Um, and base case. And, and if it is also bullish, is this consolidates right now. If you lose, if you start making new lows over here below, call it, uh, you know, 11.43, then, you know, then we're probably going to push down a little further to 11.14. Oil is off today a little bit. Let's check it out. Let's th let's start on the daily. This was the resistance. I mean, once all right. Obviously, we don't have to, to tell the story over here. We came up into this resistance. Price is sold off, and price is really where my mouse is here. To look to the left. Look down here at the support. Price only came back down and tested that support. We should be looking at maybe at a four hour. Get a better look here. So price is between the closest resistance and basing out on against this support over here. Uh, call the support at fifteen forty three. Price is consolidating in that area right now. All right. If oil is to break higher, it has to first clear this area over here. This uh, fifty four sixty one. This resistance over there. And if it does. Then there's a good chance that we're going to come up and we're going to test either between 56, 58, and 57. Uh, but right now it's consolidating. I should extend this over here and draw a support line for you. There's the local support. And price is just, it's bouncing off of it. And it looks like it's trading up. That might help the Canadian dollar, especially versus the dollar right now but it is consolidating. We have things breaking out right now. We have things moving. Uh, stick with them. Europe at the highs of the day is looking to take out the next area of resistance. Nice scenario, absolutely. Retrading everyone. I've seen everyone. Sherfu, what's going on? Good to see you in here, buddy. Um, good group, you guys. Good group of people in here. I like it. Uh, so we're kind of now. Uh, you know, it looks like the trend is set in the day.
and gold trading at the highs. Blair, you have your breakout. All right, where else? Where where else are you guys' attention? Where are you bringing your attention right now? Where you guys want to take a look? Everything seems to me to be on oil autopilot right now. You got that euro strength. Pound did it take out that level? Pound still got work to do. I think here, maybe going into, you know, pound Japanese yen, you did take out and you're still above this broken resistance here uh, to new three month highs. And now you pulled back. So now you can look for a resumption and offer it to the upside. Or if the yen strength persists and continues, uh, any, any further, any further uh, retrace of the pound into this area over here against the yen might be an area to buy it as well. But that continues to look pretty positive. The pound, Japanese yen. Uh, same thing with the pound, the Canadian dollar, Japanese yen. Also holding above this area of support and the breakout. Those two seem to be leading the way versus the yen pairs. So I see the the only the only yen weakness that I see, or I'm sorry, the only yen strength that I see is really versus the dollar. Uh, that's that's really pronounced right now. Everything else seems to be battling out. The Australian dollar is at uh, the, the high over the over the, the session against the Japanese yen and looking to take out this resistance. If it takes out this resistance right here, it's looking to test further up. So the Australian dollar, U.S. dollar, is finally making back a little bit of its gains, and the area of interest is the breakdown from Wednesday. Ishmael, how's it going? You're pausing as it comes into this little area of resistance over here. There you go, Heath. Looking for the high probability trades is the way to do it.
So the question, question on my mind, question on everyone's mind is how long does this dollar uh, sell off persist? It's come so far so quickly and so high that the possibility, well, we've taken out already Thursday's low, Wednesday's low, and we're trading now into, into Tuesday. So in the back of my mind, I'm just used to whatever weakness happens in the dollar getting, getting uh, bit up. So obviously my guard is still down on there, but it looks like a near term top could possibly have been put in, in the dollar. Euro testing the highs of the day. And you can see, so just my own two cents is you guys clearly nailed this, this resistance over here. And that's strong resistance for sure coming off that move. But it looks like it's just still consolidating over here price pretty well. I could actually see it, the, the pounds making gains uh, now versus the yen, as well as uh, every other uh, pair over the last, this session. So, I think this is just consolidation. I expect this yen weakness is going to continue. He just sent over the um, the yen index. Let me take a look first on the weekly, get my bearings. 
Let me see what he's got drawn in. He's got a trend line drawn in. So, Heath, this is different. Could you could you send me uh, into the group uh, a snapshot of your chart so I could pull up the chart into our, our live stream? And while you're doing that, I'm just going to add mine, and then we'll look at both of them, and we'll see. But I'm kind of looking at the break breakdown already happening. I really want to pull your chart up. If you could send me the screenshot with that link, that would be helpful because – this is my first look at it, but I'm, I'm looking connecting this over here and I'm showing a breakdown, which would coincide with what's happening on the, um, the, the U S dollar Japanese yen. Or I could do this. Keith, what, what other line are you connecting to from over here? This is 2017. I just have a different look. I, I, I could add this line in over here. Um, but it, Listen, I'm not saying I'm right, but this is what I see. I see that we already broke down out of that trend line over there. Yeah, Euro is a question of, Uh, obviously, it's just bouncing off this support today. It's bouncing on that weak PMI print out of the U.S. Finally, this has been this dollar strength dominating. I don't think that trend is uh, over with. I think it's a question of we're just seeing a retrace. Where that retrace ends is anyone's guess, right? Uh, what we like to see is the dollar close down towards its lows today. It's possible that dollar weakness continues. We're just used to seeing to be the, do, the dollar, any dollar weakness in every day being brought up. So uh, I, I would have to say the first area of interest um, is, you know, definitely 0.0875 is the first, but more, more importantly, we have all the way up here at 0.0925. And then um, the big one is really up uh, almost at the whole number, this big support over here. Uh, are we going to come all the way into this and test it? I have absolutely no idea. All I know that right now we're seeing a bounce on the euro and um, it looks like it's persisting. We're seeing the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar make some, some gains back versus the dollar. We're just seeing overall dollar weakness in today's session, but that's really just because the dollar has just been so overbought and going up so high so quickly. You can see on the weekly, this big candle. Um, there's a good chance that we see, uh, you know, it has to find its way into some support.
yeah, no, you, he, Heath, you, hundred percent. By the way, you and Blair both on the U.S. dollar Japanese yen nailed that resistance. I wish. What? Why is it not on that chart? Let me check out this chart. There it is. You guys put this line in there. If I can drop back down to the weekly. It's it's a great resistance line. It's super strong. And you guys nailed it. 100%. Um, I'm just noting that right or wrong, I think we you, you could see, obviously, that we could both see clear here against the dollar. This trend line break. I think this also, you know, just take another look. I, I think also we have a break here on the on the yen index. Because I'm connecting these two trend lines, and then they come into this hit again down here, and it looks like we broke down over there. That's all. Dow taking a little leg down right now. Euro making its gains, and just just a note of sentiment why that's happening. A Thirty minute chart is where we need to be. The, you know, you're not. We're not seeing yen strength. We're, we're seeing yen come off of that that big resistance you all pointed out, but we're, we're seeing yen consolidating. All right. Let's check her out. US dollar, the Canadian dollar. So this is more a story of dollar weakness, and it looks like it's it looks like the next stop is this is this support down here, right? For sure, for everyone, we we could all see that. It looks like we'll take out yesterday's low. That's what it looks like is happening. Uh, if we could get a bid under oil, that would help the case for the Canadian dollar. But we're not seeing that oil is is definitely off a little bit. Uh, oil is bouncing a little bit during New York, but we're not seeing Canadian dollar strength, right? We're, we're not. I don't think we are. But this resistance the out down up here is definitely holding, and this is the line in the sand, you know, to the upside that you need to cross. I wish I had a crystal ball. I wish I knew where this, uh, th there you go, dollar weak, where this dollar weakness w w is going gonna, is gonna to end. Right now, I know it's strong, right? I'm just a little shell-shocked of seeing the dollar been bought up. Uh, but look, again, we took out yesterday's low. We took out Wednesday's low. Are we coming down for, um, for Tuesday and, then, and, and maybe a Monday? I don't know. And this is down big time, 1%. S&P at its lows. Dow. I think, is that delayed data or not? I don't think so. 
NASDAQ looks pretty bad. What's Tesla doing? Beautiful day, beautiful day. <laughs> so far, so far, trend line rejected. Coming back down though, only into this area of now support. Canadian dollar, Japanese yen, with that little bit of yen strength today, it still looks pretty good. Still trading at or near above this support and highs. Similarly, on pound, Japanese pound, Japanese yen, both look good. I assume by now that the pound has broken above that. Yep, it's broken above that resistance over here. Pound looking pretty solid now as well. Dollar pushing the lows of the day. Bitcoin lagging. Gold towards the highs of the days up 1.7%. Enormous. Notice in precious metals, bull markets, normally silver leads. It's gold that's been leading. Is silver going to play catch up? Maybe. I mean, silver looks awesome as well, right? Silver, gold is at trading at, at uh, yearly highs. Silver is not yet. Euro trying to get the next leg up. Oh, wow. US dollar Japanese yen is actually off half percent. That's not too shabby. There's a video posted earlier. Um, this one right here. Just go into the uploads. Click right to the once. Uh, this says learn entries, how to spot entries. This is a good video if you haven't seen it yet. Take a look at it. This video over here on, on Bull Bitcoin, it's just last week's upload. At what price will you sell your Bitcoin during the next bull? I think that's, I think that's a phenomenal video. I, you know, my videos don't get many views. 
Um, YouTube won't monetize me. So I think that I don't get sent out to as many other people as people that are monetized. Uh, but this is, don't let the views kid you. This video is, is really good. And if you get a moment today or, or tomorrow, it's, it's, it's eight minutes today, it's a phenomenal video. And this one, as far as learning entries is also really solid uh, analysis also. Uh, looking to make the next leg up so silver is lagging gold a little bit those that missed out on gold i don't we, we drew this line in and then was it weren't even aware of the breakout this has been the week of trend line breakouts right gold silver and us dollar japanese yen all had enormous trend line breaks um missed it Peter, great to see you. So happy about that. Uh, by the way, Peter, uh, loved the email you sent me earlier, the video. I watched it already this morning before we got on the live stream. Looking forward to responding to that. So just a bit of history, just a little bit of history. Peter was the first... Um, Peter was the first person ever to be in, in the live stream on the first, very, very first live stream. And me, So by the way, Canadian dollar, Japanese yen looks pretty good holding this support now and resuming off of it, as well as the pound Japanese yen. Also, Peter, I prefer to give a, a look specifically responding to your question about that and where you can look for an entry. Um, I'll, I'll do that on, on a video response. By the way, let me put it in here. Let me throw it in the, in, in the chat right here right now for all of you. And then I'll delete it so it's not here for those watching the replay. But I really enjoyed the last uh, 48 hours in our chat. If you're not part of the Telegram group, do join it. When you post ideas, please post charts. It's really helpful for everyone. Um, the only other thing that I want to say is thank you for these 17 thumbs up here. Uh, I appreciate it and I do like it. So um, I wish I could hit plus ones to you guys comments and like them as well. But uh, someone remind me to remove that link from that telegram in just a moment. Dollar coming in to the top area of this resistance. I think it's got to go down further. 99.07 would be like a much 99.08, a much stronger area. Uh, take a step back, look at the daily. We've seen a, a large, large move, but we've seen this 
uber large move to the upside. So this is not really anything out of the ordinary. This is so far a small retrace. Let's see if it develops into anything bigger. Gold has already exceeded. I had a profit target. I took, I got out of the trade on a retrace. This again, Keith, you're right. Money's money and it's a good trade, right? I took the breakout and then right over here, price traded up to, to 1610. I wanted to set my stop down here. It was, it was a bigger trade than, a, than normal. So I protected those profits, which was the problem with the trade. I got stopped out at 16.05. And now I, my, my profit target though was 16.39. That's what I was looking for, 16.39. Um, you're into resistance right now. Let's take a look. Sixteen forty nine is is definitely big resistance. And then down here to, to, yeah, between that whole area, it's a blue box between 1650 and 1640. You're looking at resistance. You're, you're up into it. Now you got to clear above 1650. Uh, and if you get above 1650, then we could go as high as 18, you know, up, up in this area, 1783, 18, uh, that will be the next move, but it, you know, you're up in an area of resistance. All right. It is Friday. I'm interested to see, obviously, as everyone else is here, what happens with the dollar. Um, I always give myself a day of rest before preparing the plan for the week ahead. Still a lot of trading left in this session. Um, noticing that we're just consolidating here. I'm glad you guys also included this big resistance line here on the US dollar Japanese yen because we get above that line over there. And I think we're extending out, not to, not to say that's coming. If we do get above that, we're, we could extend out further.
stay below it. Intraday, very bearish. Yeah, big time. I mean, so again, it's just that every time we put up like a four hour chart. All right, obviously this sell-off is bigger than normal. This also comes with some pretty, uh, you know, the, the low manufacturing print, lower than expected and forecasted. So there's a good reason for it. We came up so high and so hard, it's absolutely normal. On the way up though, every single little bit of retrace we had was bought up just as quick. So uh, as we came down now into this area, definitely alert and, and watching to see whether or not that same thing happens again. It's never easy. Awesome Friday for sure. All right, traders. I think this is a good place to end it for the day. Uh, anyone who's involved in Telegram, you know, I'll, I'll be around all day today and checking in with you all there. Uh, and then I will tomorrow be preparing our outlook going into next week. Great week of trading. I see all of your game definitely sharper and sharper and sharper. And that helps me. Uh, so you guys are all great. Have a good weekend, everyone. And uh, I'll talk to you later.